Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. My name is Jimmy Elder. I am the head women's coach at Brookhaven College. Uh, we got the great fortune of winning the national title uh, last November. Um, it's my second full season here. Uh, our first full season, we finished third in the country. It's the first time in the Brookhaven College history that we were able to make the national tournament and certainly the first time we were able to win the conference, win the conference tournament and win the national title in November. So I'm going to show you some of the things we do. And we're just going to start off today with uh, zonal defending with four defenders. And we're going to go over some basic terminology we use. Uh, I haven't been to the coaching schools in a long, long time. So my terminology may not be exactly what they're using today. Um, however, it works for us. And uh, I'll go ahead and review, uh, share them with you. First off, number one is the basic terminology. Um, we, the first day we do our training with our back four defenders, we have them memorize and master three terms. One is to step, one is to hold, and one is to draw. It's short, it's quick, it's precise, it's loud, and everybody's on the same page. So when we're trying to hold this line, uh, we want compactness, but we also want to all move together. If one or two move without the rest, we have players getting in without cover. That's a problem. So we train them to step, hold, drop together. And typically we have one of our two center backs who are the brains of the defense and the vocal part of the defenders. And they're the ones reading the game and shouting the commands for the rest to follow. But at any given point, um, anyone can say step, hold, drop, etc. Okay, that's number one. Number two, um, we identify when to hold, when to step, when to drop based on where the ball is. So the first rule is the ball cannot get over your head or through you. Right? Ball cannot, they have to be in a position where the opponent has the ball, they cannot get it over their head or through them unless. Unless, if they do so, it's going to run out of bounds. The opponent will not be able to catch it. That's rule number one, B. Number one, C is. They can hold the line if they know the ball can get over their head, but their goalkeeper will be the first one there, not the opponent. That's where they hold the line. If they feel like the ball can get over their head and the keeper cannot get it in time, or the ball won't get out of bounds in time, and the opponent can get to it, they're too far up. At that point, the command is drop. And during a game, the ball moves very quickly. In a fraction of a second, you could be in a really bad position. Too close to the ball, allow the opponent to quickly and easily get in behind you. So at that point, we want them to recognize it, and immediately turn and drop, even if they have to turn their back to the ball and sprint backwards to get in a safe position where once again they can't get the ball over their head without it going out of bounds or without the keeper collecting it or clearing it. So that's one thing we rehearse. We walk them through it, we jog them through it, we put out mannequins, we give them little scenarios. Uh, we make them think fast, react fast. Think fast, react fast. Step, hold, drop. Step, hold, drop. I'll, I'll do the commands. I'll say step. They got to step together. Hold. They got to hold together. Drop. They got to drop again. They got to do it rapidly. Step, hold, drop. They got to transition immediately and quickly. Uh, so we're getting the, in, them in the habit uh, frequently so that they master those three terms and they understand the concept. This one of the uh, the second part um, of the rules is what we just went over was rule A ball cannot get over your head or through you. 
without either the keeper saving it or going out of bounds. Otherwise, you're too far up the field. Uh, rule B is hold the line as high as possible. So we want to hold this line as high up the field as possible. Uh, and the reason for that is that we want to compress this space so we help our midfielders. If we hang way back here and hold the line, they're going to have a hard time scoring goals, but we're going to give our opponent a lot of space in here to beat our midfield, to break them down, to send defenders in there and overload and get into our final third. So we want to compress the field, keep our midfielders from having to run so much and fatigue early. Um, now it's compact. Any misplayed balls, we can step up, help our midfielders win possession back. Okay? So if you're thinking about rule A and you're good, you can step up. We want you to step up, hold the line, shrink the midfield space when, when, a, when rule A is in check and in balance. Uh, rule number C, stay compact as opponent gets closer to goal. So we're kind of spread out here because the ball's on the other side of the field and we're safe and we can cover the whole width of the field. Now as the ball gets closer to our goal, right, we've got strikers coming in, a ball carrier coming in. We don't want to give them all these spaces to get in to our goal area. So we're going to tuck way in. Now they can't get through. They may be able to try to come wide, but at that point, we're safe and secure. So rule C is stay compact so we don't give up the easy goal with a through ball. We don't want to give up that ball. We don't want to let them get in behind us in front of our goal for an easy 1v1 or first touch shot on goal. Okay? So... Stay compact as opponent gets closer to goal. Be disciplined, hold the line. D, uh, as you're compact, there's some point, at some point, someone has to step out. You can't keep backing up because at our level, they can shoot from 25 to 30 good shooters and be dangerous to our, our, our goalkeeper. So at some point, someone has to step out. Our rule is... You read it, you step out when they get in shooting range. So we allow them all the time in the world, if it's a counterattack, and there's no one to pressure this player, we just let her get closer and closer and closer. As soon as she gets in shooting range, that's our time to take a stand, and we step out. The critical part here is that first, we want to step out to prevent a nice shot on goal. Secondly, we want to tuck in and close this space. That's the vital part that a lot of coaches will miss. Now, should she get beat, right, we still got a compact defense. Even if she plays it off, we got a compact defense. Uh, what happens if you don't do that? We got a striker coming in shooting range. She's got two supporting players. We step out. As we're stepping out, she plays it through. And either she dribbles to the space or she plays it to her teammate and she's in. We've left a gaping hole for them to attack through. And a lot of teams will pull the strikers out hoping that a defender will come out to create that hole. So we're going to fill that void quickly and reduce the, the chance of them getting in. Okay, so that was stay compact as an opponent as the opponent gets closer to goal. D, step out when the opponent is in shooting range. Very critical. It's as simple as that. That's where, where we're going to stop today, so you can sink your teeth into that, so you can wrap your, your head around it. Um, our next topics, as we come back on defending, will be defending when you're attacking, which is really important to us. We want our defenders in a certain position as our midfielders and strikers are attacking and we're in the opponent's 
final third because we know at some point we're going to lose it. We're going to lose the ball more often than we're going to score goals or it's going to go out of bounds. And here comes that counterattack and or the opponent. We want to hold them in that area. So we have certain uh, positions we want our defenders in to help us support the midfield. So we win the ball back, we win it back on their side, and our midfields don't have to run another 60, 70 yards to chase back. And also in the next uh, podcast, we will talk about defending the counterattack, how you should defend a counterattack. Happens every game, you're gonna have some counterattacks. Not a big deal, real simple, but most kids get it wrong, most parents and fans get it wrong, and uh, some coaches get it wrong, and we'll go over that, okay? Thanks for watching. Jimmy Elder, Brookhaven College Soccer. Um, look forward to seeing you next time.